Hello, my name is Sai Mukda Dongpusai Wongsai, and I am a Lao American poet, playwright, I forgot what I did. I'm a Lao American poet, playwright, performance artist, cultural producer, um, and sometimes when people like me, I'm an installation artist, which is why I am part of the Thank You, No Thank You exhibit over there at Asian Arts Initiative. So thank you so much for having me be part of that. Um, I wanted to talk to you about my practice as an artist and who I am. So currently uh, in, in theater world, I am the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation National Playwright in Residence at Theater Moo, which basically means that they, um, the foundation is providing my salary for the next three years uh, to just write plays and be a full-time playwright, which is amazing. And so I'm, I'm excited that I have that opportunity um, for the next three years at Theater Moo, with Theater Moo. Um, let's see, what do you want to know? Maybe I can talk to you about why I started writing in the first place, or arting, being an artist. So it started actually, I think, when I was very young. Uh, for bedtime stories, my dad would actually tell me Lao folk tales. So these were wonderful folk tales that were about lizards and giants. Um, we called them yuck, right? So this is like Lao fantasy, Lao sci-fi, um, but more fantasy and horror, lots of horror. And my father would tell me these stories about wizards that lived in caves and princesses that needed savings from these yucks, these giants with, with fangs, right? Um, and I love those stories, and so I actually went and kind of wrote fan fiction about those those Lao folk tales, those Thai, Southeast Asian Buddha folk tales, um, or Buddhist folk tales. Sorry. Um, so I I started making up stories pretty early as a kid, and he also read us a lot of science fiction by like written by white people, mostly white dudes, and I actually fell in love with that stuff. Um, I think the other part that uh, the other the other influences influences in my work would also be um, my love for Dolly Parton and her her songs and her storytelling, um, and I I just felt like her talking about her upbringing, you know, being poor and 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 having to get by, but having that love from family um, was what made her her. That I really I really uh, connected with. Um, as a former refugee, you know, I grew up having to usually wonder who um, I am, um, having to excavate and using poetry and theater to do that, right? Because growing up, so often our parents don't like to talk about the past. They don't like to, to delve into, into the messiness of what their life was like um, during the war and after the war and, and, and how their lives were disrupted, who they were before the war, right? So in my work as an artist, that's what I, I, I aim to do. I aim to um, excavate these stories and to amplify these stories, um, mostly my own. And I, I, I hope that people like would be interested in wanting to know about my story and, and finding some kind of like resonance with that, um, which is why I created this um, piece called The Unfulfilled Altars. So in recognition of Laotian um, practice of ancestral worship, so many of us are Theravada Buddhists or just Buddhists in general. And there's a, there's a part of that tradition where we do practice ancestral worship. Um, you know, I created an altar that had uh, essentially um, I guess items or, or gifts or remnants, objects that, um, that sort of represent the promises, the apologies, um, and maybe like the stories and memories that have been lost, that have been, um, yeah, lost, that have been lost, right? Um, so these are like personal items or offerings for the dead, dead promises, dead apologies, dead dreams, and, and dead stories. And I feel like 
my role as a playwright and a poet and, and now an installation artist is to ensure that that what is unfulfilled um, gets fulfilled through my poetry and my plays and other sort of like public artwork. Um, but I really wanted initially to create four separate altars, one for promises, one for apologies, one for dreams, and one for stories, but um, but was too lazy and just made one, so don't tell anybody that. Anyway, um, and, and part of the intention was to have these four altars in different places within the space so that people can travel to them and engage with each piece however they, they feel that they wanted to engage with it. Um, and perhaps, you know, having these uh, prompts along with each of those altars and the prompts could ask questions like, who do you think these are for? Um, looking at the items, what do you think these what do you think the meaning of these items are? Um, and then thinking about like, whose promises and dreams and apologies and stories deserve veneration, right? Um, who are you to say that this person does and this person's doesn't, if that makes sense. And so it's very subjective and there's no right or wrong way to interact or engage with these altars. Um, so I hope that when people look at the, the photos um, and also apo apology, I am not a photographer, so sorry if the photos are a little horrible, sorry. Um, but I hope that you do enjoy looking at them and looking at all the little items that are that are within the, uh, the altar and finding a connection to that and also like imagining your own story to that object, right? Um, separate from my intention while I, I place that item on that altar. So I hope that you do that for yourself and um, think about, you know, what of my own dreams, promises, apologies, and stories that I have that need to live out in the world um, so that they don't require their own altars. So that's really what the heart of the thing is, is what I want you to take away. So thank you so much for uh, listening to this and for letting me be part of the thank you, no thank you exhibits. Um, bye.